Welcome back to the episode 5.10 of our video course Parallel Programming and Optimization with Intel Xeon FICO Processors. We are continuing the discussion of optimization of multi-threaded applications. In this episode, we will talk about expanding iteration space in your application if there is not enough iterations in the parallel loop. As mentioned earlier, one of the challenges with the optimization of multi-threaded applications is having enough parallelism in the software to utilize the tens to hundreds of logical processors supported by Intel parallel platforms. Naturally, to have enough parallelism, the problem must be large enough. In addition to that, the balance between different levels of parallelism – MPI process, OpenMP threads, vectorization – must be chosen so that none of the parallel layers is undersaturated. To illustrate this problem, we will optimize the microkernel expressed by this equation. We have matrix M, and for each row I, we will sum the elements in all columns of the matrix and write the result into the vector S. In other words, we sweep along the rows of the matrix, computing the sum. This artificial microkernel can be viewed as a primitive one-point stencil. Indeed, the methods that we will use for this problem can also be used in stencil computations. It is trivial to construct a thread parallel and vectorized code for this kernel as shown here. The outer loop iterates over the rows of the matrix and we parallelize this loop across threads with OpenMP. The inner loop iterates over the columns and performs the summation into a thread private container sum. This loop is going to be automatically vectorized. However, the problem that we want to illustrate occurs when the outer loop has just a few iterations. To exaggerate the problem, we choose the number of rows, m, equal to 4, while the number of columns is in the hundreds of millions. So we are dealing with a very short but wide matrix. We will see later in the course that situations with too few iterations in the outer loop often arises after another optimization, loop tiling, which is usually implemented for memory traffic improvement. If you run this application in the performance analysis tool Intel VTune Amplifier XE, we will see the following picture. The horizontal bands are the timelines of different OpenMP threads. We want to see brown color regions, which means useful computations. We don't want to see orange, which means spinning and idling threads. What we actually see is that four threads are performing work, while all other threads are sitting there doing nothing. We need to fix this situation. It seems that there is not enough parallelism in the outer thread parallel loop, but there is a lot of parallelism in the vectorized inner loop. Can we assign more parallelism to the threads and less parallelism to vectors? Indeed, we can do this. And once again, the programming technique called strip mining will help us with that. This code shows the optimized version of the metric sweep microkernel. It is a little more complex than our original code. To understand what is happening, let's start with the innermost loop. The innermost loop in J is vectorized and it has 1024 iterations instead of the 100 million iterations in the original code. To process all the elements that we have in the matrix, we also have a loop in double J, which iterates with a stride of 1024. As you can see, what we did is we strip mined the loop in J. Finally, the outer loop is in I as in the original code. But another very important difference is how the loops are parallelized. The statement pragma OMP parallel 4 has clause collapse 2. This statement tells OpenMP that we want to parallelize across not one loop, but across two nested loops following this pragma. So we will have in total m multiplied by n divided by strip iterations distributed across threads, which for our parameter range is in the thousands. This should be enough to keep around 240 logical processors in an Intel Xeon FICO processor occupied. To make this loop collapse possible, we had to strip mine the loop in J and change the thread private container from a scalar called sum to an array called sum and implement reduction at the end of the parallel region. That thread private array is now necessary because different threads may be working on the same value of i. So we have to isolate the right space of those threads from each other. 
If we repeat analysis in Vtune for the optimized code, we will see that timelines of all threads are mostly brown, which means that all threads are working now. This was the intent of our optimization, to balance the parallelism between vectors and cores. Performance measurements that I will show in a minute confirm that this is a highly efficient solution. However, before we view the performance numbers, I want to mention that one could attempt other strategies for expanding parallelism. For example, because the inner loop has a lot of iterations, we could try to move the OpenMP fragment down to the inner loop. Alternatively, we could try to collapse loops without strip mining the loop in J. Both of those strategies are not optimal. It is evident from the performance results. You can find detailed explanation for it in our book. Finally, here are the performance measurements. We report them in units of gigabytes per second, because it is obviously a memory-bound application. The first set of bars is the initial code, where only four threads are working. The last set of bars is the code with strip mining and loop collapse. As you can see, the performance impact on the host processor was a factor of 2, and on the coprocessor, which was miserable with the original code, the performance improved almost by a factor of 20. In the end, uh, the Xeon Phi native application performs more than twice as fast as the host application. The values of our measurement are slightly higher than the results of the stream benchmark in the copy test. And this is not surprising, because the stream benchmark has to read and write, while our benchmark only reads data from memory. The second and third sets of bars show performance for alternative solutions of the problem. As you can see, parallelizing the inner loop was almost a good solution. But loop collapse without strip mining did not go well at all. Refer to our book for more details on those measurements. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below the video. And as always, thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you in the next episode.